Good morning. Thank you for joining us in person and online at Worship at Nine here at First Presbyterian Church. My name is Cassandra and I'm the children's ministry coordinator here. The children can come with me to Kid Zone after our opening worship songs. This morning, Keith will be sharing straight out of the water later in our worship service. If you're new to church, we want you to feel welcome and know that Keith would love to meet with you at our refreshment station in the back and welcome you in person after worship. So please stay around. Please remember to fill out your connection cards in the pew and drop it with your offering in the boxes by the doors as you leave. Our work and mission continues to grow and it would not be possible without your generous support. Thank you all so much. We encourage you to chat with Pastor Christy, Keith, Pam Anderson, or Guy Cass if you know someone who needs help of one of our Stephen ministers as we launch this new ministry. And our first Lenten soup supper will be this Wednesday at 5.30 in Fellowship Hall. Pastor Christy will be sharing on I am statements from John's Gospel. So please sign up today or call the office to add your name to the list to help us with catering. Now it's time to get our worship started by watching our opening video. morning please stand we're going to sing our first song um while, while we're singing this corinne's going to come around um and give you a little bag of treats from youth group uh, just to tell you that you're loved you're special um you can eat them during the service don't stick them in your pocket don't hold them in your hand or they'll all turn into mush all right or into milk okay what a friend we have in jesus Everybody has trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak and isolation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend. Everybody got worries. Everybody knows sorrow, devastation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's to ask my. on every horizon and forever and ever this heart is my home no more betrayal for his faithful he fills me up and my cup runs no more betrayals for his faithful 
how he has proven it over and over. No more betrayals for his word. He fills me up and like a brother. No more betrayals for his faithful. How he has proven it over and over, over and over. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. And I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever, this heart is bound. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. And I see grace on every horizon. And forever and I think there's so many times we, we, we forget what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, when things aren't going good, uh, we can really get down on ourselves. And just to remember that Jesus is always there for us. Um, it, it's something that lifts our hearts. And we're, we're blessed by that. Our next song um, is Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be your glory. 
seated. Let's just pray before Caitlin comes and reads our scripture for today. Lord, we are grateful and, and blessed to have you and to be in your presence. Lord, we ask that you'll open our hearts and our minds to hear from you. Lord, our hearts go out to all those affected with the shooting in Kansas City, to the family of that young mother who was tragically killed. And Lord, we pray for peace in our world. We pray for greater understanding and greater love. We pray, Lord, that these things that we hear about day by day of shootings and killings and wars and across the world will cease. We pray for your peace. We pray for you to touch hearts and lives, to change hearts and lives. Pray that you will use us to be instruments of that peace, that we will speak out against injustice, that we will speak up for those who have no voice. We pray, Lord, that we, we will reach others who feel alone and abandoned. And I pray, Lord, that as a church family, we will support and gather around everyone in that family, helping them, encouraging them, pushing them forward to greater things. We ask it all in the, in the name of the one who blesses us with his love, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today we are reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15, and it's the New International Version. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once, the spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Before the empty tomb and glorious resurrection, before the scandal of the cross, before Palm Sunday, the calling of disciples and all the wonders of his ministry. Jesus traveled first to the wilderness, to the solitude and desolation of rock and sand, a king above kings experiencing the hunger and destitution of man. And when the time came for temptation, despite 40 days of deprivation, the Lion of Judah stood firm, confounding every attack with the power of his perfection. In this season of Lent, we share in his sacrifice, not to experience anguish or to portray a counterfeit righteousness, but to draw closer to his holy presence. We withdraw from our distractions. We cast aside treasures and possessions, forsaking all that would separate us from his love. In this desert, he is the source of what sustains us, the joy in our surrender, 
the peace that surpasses all understanding. He is our hope in Lent. So I just want to remind you uh, to pick up something as you leave. They're on the little stand just at the door. Um, you might be wondering and thinking to yourself, what am I going to do this afternoon? Well, we have good news for you. The fish banks are ready. And um, oh, it should end up looking like this after probably a couple of hours of trying to get it together. It was funny. Um, Brittany's new in the office and these came in and she tried to put one of them together and it took her a little while. And she came in to me and looked at me and goes, I don't have to build all of these, do I? And I went, no, one, one's enough. So uh, if you want to pick those up, um, put your change, loose change in there or your loose notes in there or loose checks. Who, who knows? We will collect these all in on Palm Sunday. So they're just sitting at the door. Um, it's one great hour of sharing. It's providing relief from natural disasters, food for the hungry, support from the poor and oppressed. It's a great deal. And uh, if we can give to that, uh, please do. So don't rush off without picking up your fish bank. I wonder, have you ever been somewhere or experienced something that made you think you were witnessing something brand new. Something was happening. And here you are in the midst of it all. Anybody ever been in that situation where you thought, wow, this is new, this is different? It's a bit like last Sunday. If you remember last Sunday, we were all sitting in front of our televisions and we all knew for certain that the Chiefs were going to win. No? There's heads or shit. We all knew that they were going to win. No matter what happened in the game, we were sitting there so confident. No? Not confident. Three seconds to go, we still weren't that confident. We definitely weren't that confident. But in those three, when that clock stopped with three seconds to go, and the touchdown had been scored by the Chiefs. They tell us that what we were witnessing at that moment was the start of a new dynasty in AFL football. A new dynasty. Here we, we, we were, like one of those moments. You'll be able to tell stories about it in years to come. I saw that game. I watched that game. I knew they were going to win. I was so confident. But there it was, in that moment, a new dynasty was happening. It was exciting. It was thrilling. How wonderful it is to be around at the start of something great and something new. And that's really what's happening in this passage that Caitlin read to us this morning from Mark's Gospel. Mark is announcing that this is the beginning of good news of a new thing. God is about to start something new. What a moment in time. God was changing the narrative for the world by sending his son, Jesus, to change the world. This was it. This was the time, that exact moment in time. A number of weeks ago, we met John the Baptist. We talked about him preaching about the baptism of repentance and the forgiveness of sins. And people were flocking from all over the place together at the edge of the River Jordan to be baptized. John was doing a great job. John was doing a top-notch job. He was bringing pe people, wayward people, back to God. He was telling them the good news. And he was telling them that God will forgive them their, their sins, and he was baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But John didn't get carried away by a success. He knew his purpose. He knew why he was here. He knew what he was trying to do for God. 
And that was to point the people to Jesus. And he tells the crowds this. He says it's something like this here. There's someone coming after me. And he is far more powerful. You think I've done great? This guy coming later, I'm not even worthy to untie the straps of his sandals. And yes, I have baptized all of you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I just love John's attitude. I just love the person that John is. The whole humility of things stands out for me here. People were thronging to see him. He was one of the hottest tickets in town. It was like being in Vegas. You couldn't get a ticket to go to hear John the Baptist if they were selling tickets. He was just doing great. But he knew all he was doing was preparing the way. He knew that something greater was going to come. He was the support act, and he was waiting for the main act to come to take the stage, to take the world stage. John never got carried away by his success. He always pointed to Jesus. He always pointed to God. What a guy he was. I just There's something about him, this rough and ready guy. And he had the privilege of baptizing Jesus. And I know he struggled with that. I know he said, hey, come on, Jesus. I don't need to baptize you because you haven't sinned. You don't need to repent. And Jesus says, I want you to baptize me. You can hear, you can imagine the little argument probably going on. No, you don't need to. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Baptize me. And we can picture the scene, hopefully, as Jesus is coming up out of the water and the heavens are torn apart and the Spirit descends upon him like a dove. And then the encore of all encores. God's voice was heard. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Here was God announcing to the world that Jesus was his son. The Messiah had finally arrived. Baptism is so important in the Christian church. And it's obvious that it has to matter because Jesus felt it mattered. God felt it mattered to have his son baptized. But sometimes we'll say, why does it matter? Well, it matters because when we're baptized, God is saying who we actually are. When Jesus was baptized, God announced him, my son, the savior of the world. And when we look at this beauty of Jesus' baptism, we get a glimpse of what God does for each one of us when we are baptized. He sends his Holy Spirit upon us. We become a new creation and we are named, named as children of God. Isn't that amazing? John had made it clear what Jesus would do, that he would baptize with the Holy Spirit. And you and I, when we are baptized, when we come to God, when we surrender ourselves to him, when we give him our lives, there's all different connotation of words you can use for that. But when we come to God, the same spirit that descended on Jesus descends on us. The same spirit that went with Jesus through his life is with us through our lives. The same power, think about this, The same power that was given to Jesus is given to you and me. If only we would believe. If only we had the belief. It's significant in this reading when we read that the heavens were opened. The Greek word that Mark used literally means he saw the heavens being ripped apart. And that imagery is so important for us because the word that Mark used for ripped apart only is seen once more in his gospel. And that word was used at the moment when Jesus died on the cross and the curtain was ripped in two. In both circumstances, 
the things that had been long sealed had suddenly been flung open. The heavens were flung open to signify that we can have a relationship and eternal life with God. The temple curtain was ripped open for God to say to all people, you can come to me and worship. There is no holy of holies anymore. I'm here for all of you. What a moment. What a moment. The signal of a new creation. The signal that everything had changed. Everything had changed. God had ripped apart the heavens and he declared, this is my beloved son. And every time we baptize, whenever someone is in Christ, there's a new creation. In this one moment in Mark chapter 1, all three members of the Godhead are present. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're there to affirm both Jesus' divinity and his humanity. God names Jesus in baptism. His identity is sealed forever. And for us today, the baptism of believers also establishes our identity. Jesus is who God says he is. So are we. God calls you by name. Think about that. God knows you by name and he calls you his son or his daughter. Paul writes in Galatians, for as many of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. We become more like Jesus. That's what God's looking for us to do. We are children of God. What a family we have. What a father we have. That's who we are. When we meet Jesus, he meets us where we are and he allows us to experience this life-changing power that transforms our emptiness in the fullness of life. When people say to you, I don't know, there's something just wrong with my life. There's a real, there's a real hole. It seems like a real hole in my life that I can't fill. And I've tried everything. People will try drugs and alcohol. They'll try anything they can think of to fill this void in their lives. And it can't be filled with nothing but Jesus is the only one who can fill it. He transforms our emptiness into fullness. And I believe so firmly that we need to hear the voice of this rough and ruddy and incredible prophet named John calling people to repent and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's our role. We are to prepare the way. We are to be the John the Baptist who go and tell people that they need to turn to God that they need the Holy Spirit in their lives to get them through life. We need to hear John's call and we need to take up that call. I'm sure there's no one here that doesn't want to experience Jesus in a powerful and personal way. And others need to know, not just, just us. Coming to Jesus means that we can reboot and restart our lives. Anybody ever struggle with technology? The computers and phones really get, uh, or you're ready to throw it in, in, in the trash because it's not working. You can't get something to work. You don't know what to do. You Google it. You try all these different things. It still won't work. And then you finally phone a technician or it's an automated something or other. And you, you tell them what's wrong and they go to the reboot. Turn it off. Start again. Everything will be fixed. That's what's happening here. Our lives, when we come to Jesus, we reboot them. We restart them to the way that God created us to be. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. But sometimes we do not want the re-reboot. We don't want the restart. We're happy with all the little flaws and all the little things that's go going wrong. God tells us it's time to reboot. It's time to change. 
to be created the way we were. Have a fresh start, a new life. Most of us, I don't think, really understand the importance of baptism in the development of our faith. But it's a vital step of faith that releases the power of God's Spirit in our lives. When we hear the word baptism, we'll think about a baby. We'll remember Taylor and AJ and Maggie Rose a few weeks ago up here. Beautiful, wonderful. And Maggie's here today, and you heard her sing earlier on. You heard that little voice. It's, It's a wonderful thing. But you know, the thing is, baptism is not really anything to do with us. It's all to do with God. I once heard a preacher say that baptism is God's way of saying yes to us. We come to be baptized and God says, yes, you're my child. Wonderful. The thought of God saying yes to Keith Neal or the thought of God saying yes and you put your names in there to me is amazing. It has to fill our hearts with overflowing. God says yes to me with all my faults, with all the mess, with all the things going on in life, God always says, yes, you're my child. Whether you're baptized as a baby or choose to do it later in life, maybe you're not even baptized, you need to realize that at the moment that you step forward and are baptized, you're claimed as a child of God just as Jesus did and heard when he came out of the water. He heard his father say who he was. He was setting him up for his ministry. He was setting him up for the rest of his earthly life. Here's my son. I'm well pleased with him. My friends, God exists neither next to us nor merely above us, but rather with us. And most important of all, he is for us. Never forget that God is for you. He is not only our God and Lord, but he's also our father. He's also a brother, a friend. We see this so clearly in Jesus' baptism. It's the same for anyone who comes to Jesus and is baptized. We have an amazing, great God who truly loves us. And I don't think it sinks in for us truthfully. I don't think we have grasped the awesomeness of God and how different our lives look when he's in our lives and is active in our lives. Think about it. The one who created the heavens and earth, the one who entered into a covenant with his servant, Abram, who wrestled with Jacob, who called Moses from the burning bush, delivered his people Israel from captivity, sustained the nation through the judges and the prophets, anointed kings to lead his people, became incarnate in Jesus Christ, saved the world by dying on a cross and was resurrected three days later. That same God is deeply and madly in love with each one of you, with each one of us. His love is much deeper than the love we just celebrated on Valentine's Day. Our world tries to say we love you by spending millions and millions and millions of dollars and whatever other currency there is to tell someone that we value them. Chocolates and gifts and flowers. We have given you little chocolates today, little kisses. I had a great morning on Thursday. I have to tell you this story. Thursday morning, 7 o'clock. I do get up early, so, all right. So, 7 o'clock, PHMS at FCA. So many little, all right, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And we're talking about love and the love of God. And so, towards the end, I said to them, 
okay, here's what we're going to do today. Who's up for sharing hugs and kisses with each other today? For some reason, I hadn't a great, you know, there, was, there wasn't a great response. All right? You seen all the boys' faces going, what? You seen all the girls going, but then I had about 11 people, 11 young people who put their hands up. And I said to them, brilliant, come up here. So they, you know, they sort of came up. And as they got up, I pulled out this big bag of Hershey's hugs and kisses. And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a few of these and have some for yourself and give the others to somebody else. Suddenly, my 11 started to grow as everybody else started to stand up and decided we could do some of those hugs and kisses. I told them, no, sorry. Sorry, you have to sit down. You didn't put your hand up. You weren't brave enough at the start to share it. To which we got a lot of, oh. Eventually, I gave in and gave them all some to share. But it's like that, we're like that with Jesus. God wants us to share his love with others. He wants others to know his arms around them, those big hugs. And we're afraid to take that step, just like those young people were. Until they heard it was chocolate, and that was a different matter. Now we could share that. Our God is so much sweeter and better than chocolate. And he needs to be shared. He needs to be shared. Baptism matters because it matters to God. He calls us his children. My prayer is that one day each of us will hear God's voice saying, you are my beloved son or my beloved daughter. And I am so pleased with you. I'm so pleased with you. That's the words I think all of us want to hear spoken over our lives. Jesus was baptized as a sign of his dedication, his wholehearted obedience to God, and we need to follow that example. Baptism doesn't make you a member of God's family. Only faith in Christ does that. But what baptism does is show that you're a part of God's family. When Jesus came out of that water, God declared him as his son. He's part of my family. That's what God does for each one, one of us. Baptism shows that we're part of God's family. It's a bit like a wedding ring, a visible reminder of an inward commitment made in your heart. So today, may each of us know the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And may we never be ashamed to be known as a child of God. And may we never be ashamed to share God's love with others and let them feel the warmth of a massive hug from a God who loves them so much. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and that by your grace we are born anew. We are a new creation. By your Holy Spirit, renew us and refresh us so that we are empowered to do your will. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to walk in the new life that we receive from you. Help us to stay close to you. Help us to be guided by you. Help us to hear you as we step out and journey life with you. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let's stand. I haven't done this song for a long, long time, and we had a few technical difficulties earlier, so hopefully this works. It's called Jesus, I Need You.
let's just pray as we finish. Jesus, we need you. We need you. Every hour, we need you. Come and let us feel your presence, Lord. Let us hear your voice claim each one of us is your child. You call us by name. You walk beside us. You love us. You care for us. You have a plan for us. And you've adopted each one of us to be children of God. Help us to live that way. Help us to share that with others. Help us to make a difference in others' lives. Send us out this week, Lord, in confidence and in in faith to share your love and your message of hope. Amen. Have a great week.